Oh, snap. Yo, what's poppin'? Here we are at the river, and today I'm super stoked because I'm fishing with another ultralight rod. Honestly, I've owned this one since last Christmas. It was a Christmas present for myself. But today I wanna to talk a little bit more about it. This is the Dobbins Trout and Panfish, uh, it's the Dobbins Sierra Trout and Panfish series. This is a six foot two ultralight. Let's check out these uh, ratings. This is a fast action, rated for 132nd to 316th. Uh, it's a one piece rod. It's very nice, very nice, but it definitely has some things about it that are a little bit different than other ultralights I've used. And so I wanted to talk about those, kind of share my experiences with it so, thus far, and then I also want to lay the smack down on some fish, man. So that's what we're gonna do. That being said, I'm excited to get started fishing. Also, hey, where are you? Oh, also we're fishing with my man, Bo. Let's go, Ethan, let's get some fish. <laughs> Bo's a good guy. He's uh, he's really good with a camera too. Honestly, he takes dynamite photos and he makes some really cool videos as well. So I will leave his uh, YouTube channel, Instagram, all that stuff linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's start catching some fish. Oh, that water feels so good. So right now I'm fishing with a 132nd ounce mule jig and a donkey tail junior, uh, black color and a chartreuse head. This is certainly one of the most unique ultralights that I've fished with. It's really a high quality rod. This is a $150 rod. You know, most of the ultralights I fish with are pretty inexpensive. And I really don't think you need to spend big dollars on ultralights. It's all a matter of what you're looking to get out of it. But ultimately, I think you can do just fine with a very budget rod. This one, on the other hand, like I said, it's 150 bucks. But this thing is very stout. It is definitely a fast action. It feels almost like a light or a medium light. It doesn't really feel like an ultralight, but as soon as you hook a fish, you're like, yeah, that's an ultralight. It's kind of an interesting rod, and I, I really, really like the way it handles. The one thing that I will say is the ratings, 132nd to 316th, I think they're spot on with those. I think anything less than 132nd is kind of a pain in the butt to cast because that rod is, it's pretty darn stout. It doesn't really load up a ton, but anything in that range is pretty much perfect. I feel like there's gonna be a rock bass and all this gunk up here. I totally welcome rock bass. You guys know that. There's one, that's gotta be, I bet it's a Rocco. I bet it's a Rocco. It is a Rocco. All right. Um, that one I just skated in. Obviously that didn't really fight at all, but it's a pretty small fish. You'll see when I hook anything of decent size, this rod really loads up quite well. I love their red eyes. Such a cool fish. All right, see you, buddy. I will embrace as many rock bass as I can get today. You know, I've been doing a lot of the uh, ultralight videos and I've been buying lots of ultralights, but I did want to include my existing ultralights in this series too, because I really, really do like them. And I felt like I've never really done a video specifically on this rod. So that's why we're doing it. I'm going to do it also for some of my other rods that I own. I've got a Daiwa Presso travel rod that I want to do a video on. I've got a Shimano Sojourn that I've been fishing with for years I want to do a video on. So just stay tuned for those as well. I'm glad you guys are really enjoying these ultralight videos. There's another one, another Rocco. I am the rock bass master. <laughs> Bo's back there, hasn't caught a thing. I think it's time Bo picks up an ultralight. All right, oh, oh, oh okay, bye now. Another one, aren't you a little jealous? That rod is barely even bending. I mean, I'm bringing these downstream and they're also really small. So not necessarily expecting to put a lot of bend in this rod on a fish like this, especially when I'm pulling them downstream. I gotta catch a small mouth so Bo doesn't give me too much of a hard time. I don't know what's wrong with the Rocco though. Oh baby, yes sir. That one's actually bigger. He's putting up a little more of a fight. Just a little chunky. Oh, look at those like black tips on his fins. That's neat. Check out this. Oh, oh, okay, stop, stop. Check out those black tips on his fins. That's really neat looking. Pretty fish. Bo, you sure you don't want an ultra? I've caught four fish. <laughs> All right, see you, buddy. All right. Also, I'm using six pound braid to a four pound monofilament leader today. Um, I do like the braid. I actually do. I really like the braid on this rod. Another one. Oh, he's got a little more fight to him. You can see that rod loading up there. Nothing too crazy. Again, I'm pulling him downstream. Not a very big fish, but he's got some nice fight to him. It's actually definitely the best rock bass I've caught today. Gorgeous little specimen. He's actually got like a little, uh, some sort of damage situation going on here. Not sure what happened there, buddy, but uh, go on back now. See ya, uh, Rocco. There seems to be just an absolute pile of them in this tree. Another one. It's kind of ridiculous. How is there that many fish in one little section? And you know what? That one's even bigger. That one's pretty solid. Check that fish out. Okay, okay. Check him out. Little football, dude. All right, he's feisty. See you, bud. Crazy how many of those things are in this one little section. 
Like it's too easy. Like it's just one little tiny section and they're just piled up. You know, there actually is one thing to be said about this, right? There are certain ultralights that these fish would be putting a lot of pressure on the rod, but this rod is just a different taper. It's not necessarily like, it's not like a true, true ultralight. I would say it's on the upper end of an ultralight. It's closer to a light power, I would say. Um, but as soon as you hook into some of those fish, just a little bit bigger, like a eight inch bluegill, you're like, okay, this thing, it's got some flex. I think these rock bass just don't fight quite as hard as a lot of species. And so they're not a super good demonstration. So I'm hoping, hoping, fingers crossed, we can find a couple smallmouth. Even if they're a little eight inch smallmouth, I think it'll be a great demonstration. I feel like an absolute model out here. Bo is taking super high quality, awesome photos of me. I'm so excited to see them. Basically, if you guys ever need a fishing model, feel free to hit me up. I must have caught them all. Nope. <laughs> How about that? Catching rock bass and modeling them professionally. I only charge $500 an hour for my modeling services. One thing I do like about this rod because it is stouter, it allows you to kind of twitch your bait a little bit more. You want to rip it and have a little bit more control over your bait. You know, when you have that stouter rod, you can just feel things through cover better. It is a pro for sure. It is a nice benefit of having something with a little bit more backbone. Holy smokes, what was that? I looked the other way and something came up and slapped at it. That... Holy, you see the... <laughs> oh man, there's literally a small mouth. Oh my God. Oh my God. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. Come on, come do it again. I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This smallmouth is literally just sitting next to me and he just pops it. Like it's just dangling in the water. Oh my gosh, that freaked me out. I think there's a couple of renegade smallmouth that literally like are sitting right next to me. And I just float this thing on the top of the water and they come up and pop it. They're absolute dinks, but I'll take them. That's the species I'm looking for. Now, if I could just find a little bit bigger one than that. There's one. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> Good times, man. Good times. Well, not what I expected, not the technique to uh, catch these smallies as I was expecting, but clearly they're feeding towards the top of the surface. Uh, that's for sure, because they're literally coming up and biting this thing while I just dangle it about an inch under the water. That's crazy. I've never caught fish like that. There's one. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Like the only way I can catch these fish is literally just drifting it behind me. <laughs> oh snap, look at this. Look at how the dorsal fin has my tail on the donkey tail and it's stretching it way out. There we go. Let's get that back. <laughs> Can't keep up with him. Another dink, but that was the first one I actually caught on a cast, so that felt good. I'm catching a lot more fish than I expected. I'm not catching any of the quality I was hoping to find, but that's okay. Certainly not gonna complain about this. Oh, snap, what do we got here? All right, this is more what I'm looking for. That's got a little bit more bend in the rod. We're sitting here in the current, so. Yes, it's a rock bass. <laughs> Look at him though, that's a nice rock bass, my gosh. That one fights a little bit harder because it's a little bit bigger. Nice quality meatball. Hopefully you guys are kind of seeing that this really is such a unique rod. It's not like any other of the ultralights that I own. I think what's nice about it is, you know, this is a six foot two model, but they actually offer a lot of the longer rods too. Stuff that's closer to seven foot. And based on how stout it is, I honestly think some of those longer rods would be a blast to fish with because you're not gonna have such a whippy rod. Part of the reason I don't like long ultralights a lot of times is they get to be so whippy. But with this model of rod, I think that those longer ones are gonna be just fine. All right, now's where I start doing some damage. We're up close to this waterfall. I gotta imagine there's stuff sitting right behind it. Right in the center, I can see some nice current break. This should be a very fun place to fish, I think. There he is. That was a nice bite I felt in the rod tip. I think it's another rock bass, but he's got some good fight to him. It's another solid one. Very similar to the last one, I would say. This one's also got those really black fins. That's interesting, man. That's very pretty. Like, look at those. That's incredible. Look at that juicy little smallie. All right. Beauty. Oh, whoa. See ya, bud. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I launched him clear out of the water. This is one of those micro meatballs. Look at that. <laughs> good times, good times, good times. Oh yeah. That spot looked way too good. Look at this guy. He's pulling good. I don't know if you can see that rod tip at all, but it's definitely got a little bit more pull to it. And you know, obviously the current's helping this guy, but it's also a really nice, healthy Rocco. What's nice about a rock bass is just how big their mouth is. <laughs> it, makes, it makes getting them unhooked really easy. Look at that. It's just a beauty. Nobody makes rock bass videos. Why is that? They're fun fish, man. They might not fight as hard. They may be a little smaller, but they're a good time. And look at them. Awesome eyeballs on these guys. See you, bud. Oh yeah, that was a nice feeling bite in that rod tip, man. Man, I love the fact that I can really pick up on those light bites. That is why I fish this rod a lot. It's such a good one to detecting some of those lighter bites. Oh boy. Oh boy, this guy's got some fight too. God, they fight a lot better when you get them in this current. Beautiful fish. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh, there we go. Man, that was a nice, oh, he's got me behind something. Oh man, this one just took off and that's a nice Rocco. Look at that fish. That's crazy, that one's big. Yes, Dwayne the Rock Johnson shows out. Holy smokes, beauty. All right, see ya bud. This spot's the mega school of fish, just loaded. I watch my line, but I also feel it in the rod tip. That one, I saw it in my line. That's a little bit better smallmouth. Sadly, this is one of my best smallmouth of the day. Oh, there he goes, easy release. Grab the jig head, let him flop. Oh, that was a nice bite. I like that, I like the way that feels. I like the way that feels. Man, that one's really pretty too, golly. Talk about a good time, guys. Hey, I've been working all week and I'm tired. I don't want to sleep and I want to have fun. It's time for a good time, yeah. Just a little Alan Jackson. Can't go wrong with a little Alan Jackson while you're on the river. Popping fish, man. A little small jaw, a little rock bass. A little bit of good times. Oh my gosh, he just popped the crap out of it. My line jumped, my rod tip doinked. Holy smokes, another quality rock. These ones actually fight a little bit because they get so much more size to them and they can just kind of use that weight, turn in the current, and they can fight pretty nice actually. And with this ultralight, it's a blast. It's an absolute blast. We're gonna, oh my gosh, look at this. Guys, guys, I'm turning him loose. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, see a rock bass. This is insane. Smallmouth eats it right behind me when I'm drifting my jig. Guys, I'm in a, just an absolute mega school of these fish. Holy smokes. We got a drone flying around. This is just fun, guys. So anyways, I don't even know what I'm saying, but this rod, it's all reliable. And I think that I would not catch near as many fish on my other ultralights in this situation because it would be much harder to detect those bites. Having that increased level of sensitivity um, in situations like this certainly pays off. Again, you pay for it up front by spending more on the rod, but I will say it does put you in a position to catch some more fish in situations like this. We've got a lot of current. Um, these fish are pretty small. They are light biters. They're not easy to uh, detect and you can't always see it in the line because of all the current and the fact that your jig is washing down. So I would say situations like this, it, it, it certainly helps. Ah, he was boinking it. Ah, he smoked it. Try that again. How many times do I gotta do this? It's just a dinky smallmouth, I think. There he is. <laughs> I was right. I told you it was a dinky smallmouth. He kept doinking it. That time I got him. Third time's a charm. Oh my gosh. What do we got? We're tangling with a nice one. God, it's got some fight. Is this a, surely this has to be a smallmouth. Yeah, that's a best smallmouth yet. Not saying a whole lot, but that's more what we were looking for. If I can just grab it. There we go. Oh my gosh, this is such a pretty smallmouth. Look at the pattern on his back. It's like almost greenish. Ah! And uh, that was a nice catch. I gotta give myself some credit. Uh, there we go, man. Just a really pretty fish. Fought extremely hard on that ultralight. Perfect. This is the kind of stuff I was looking for. All right, see ya, buddy. My gosh, they're feisty, dude. 
Holy smokes, folks. I'm having an absolute blast out here. I'm catching all sorts of rock bass, smallmouth. It's a good time. And I got to say, I hope that you are kind of seeing what kind of rod this is. I got to be honest with you. I really, really, really like this ultralight, but I don't really view it as the same as my other ultralights. This is stouter. It's got more sensitivity. It's just a different feeling rod. It's a different performing rod, but it's still an ultralight and it's still a blast to catch even smaller fish. I think this is always going to be one of my go-to sticks. I think it's going to be great for like deep water jigging and for crappie, like I said. I think you can still pull off some trout fishing with it. I think you can obviously put it to work for smallmouth, rock bass, bluegill. It's a multi-species rod and it does a fine, fine job. Like I said, it's a little bit higher end, but I think in the components and just the quality of the build, I think that really does make up for it. It's got a dynamite reel seat. It's got a great rod grip. Um, everything's comfortable about it. Aesthetically, it looks beautiful. All in all, I'm talking this rod up because I genuinely like it. I've been fishing with it for six months. I am excited for the day that I pick up an ultralight that I don't like because I'm, I feel like I'm praising all of these ultralights, but I'm only doing it because I genuinely feel that they are solid. I hope one of these days that I pick up a rod and I'm just like, this is trash. I don't know why I want that, but I just kind of want that. Anyways, I actually just saw some bluegill swimming around right here. So I'm hoping that I can catch a bluegill or two because, you know, multi-species are bust. That being said, I'm going to keep fishing because this is a dynamite day. I didn't expect it to be this good but man i am glad i came out let's get back to it let's go catch a few more um, I, have... I didn't realize that oh there we go oh largemouth largemouth sweet and it's my best fish of the day i think well it's about like that last smallie i caught nice i didn't expect this see fish like this on this ultralight like these little like 10 inch bass man they're an absolute blast they're an absolute blast all right see you buddy Gave me a little bit of water in the face. You should have came more prepared, buddy. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. So you're saying you're happy right now I with am. your performance? Look at this. I am probably happier than you are catching these uh, rock bass. <laughs> Dude, are you seeing how much fun I'm having? Look at this. You're always having fun. Look at this, Bo. Don't you want more of this in your life? Look at him. I gave him a nose ring. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, Bo is not so easily converted to ultralight. Whatever, buddy. This is kind of ultralight. I gotta, I gotta say, Finesse. nothing but respect, dude. Stick to your guns. Stay true to who you are as an angler. I happen to be crazy about ultralight stuff because I just love catching lots and lots of fish, but I sacrifice probably some of those big fish. You are a big fish bow. Oh, smokes. Oh man, there's a 15, 16 inch smallmouth swimming up in front of me. He's just like, what are you doing? Stop, get away from me. That'd be so cool if I caught him. I'm not going to, I already spooked him. Good news is we're seeing some of those fish. Now, if Bo could just connect with one, that would be great. Because we know that I'm... Oh, did you... What? He literally just broke me off. <laughs> I knew I probably had some frays in my line because I've fought so many fish, and I think my line at one point kind of went through the gill plate of a rock bass, and I just didn't pay any attention to it. Pasture fire, donkey tail junior. It's kind of hard to get the donkey tail junior over the keeper, and I understand that, but the good news is because it's hard to get it over it, it's also hard to get it back off. So all you gotta do is simple. So I'm gonna get this nice and straight and I'm gonna pop it out behind the second rib because I know that's where the hook comes out on the 132nd. And then I just, here's what I do. When you wanna get that over the keeper, grab it, pull it up, snap it into place. Sometimes it doesn't work on the first time, so in this case it didn't. So I'm gonna pull it up, just kinda, you can manhandle it, you know? And then just snap it into place and you see how that's perfect? Boom. Perfectly rigged, and that is not going to come off. That'll last you as long as you want. Is that a bluegill or is that a green sunfish? What is that? That's a bluegill. That's a bluegill. <gasps> He's got it. Yes. Yes. All right. Actually, that's a uh, green gill. It's a bluegill green sunfish hybrid. Fourth species for the day. Beautiful fish. See you, bud. Oh, fully submerged. Oh, yep. Nope. Thanks. Ah. Why is there like a school of mixed fish? There's rock bass and sunfish together. There he is. Did I get a, I got a rock bass. That was crazy. I've never seen that before. There was literally like probably four rock bass and like three of those green sunfish hybrids and they were all swimming together. That's a bluegill. There we go. Another species. Nice. Very skinny fish. Pretty fish though. Very nice colors on them. See you bud. Oh, he's, he's got it. Yes. Sight fished him. I love doing that. Sight fishing with ultralight is so fun. Man, he's got some fight in him. By golly. By golly. Chill, dude. Chill. Can you chill for a minute? Can you just chill? 
Look at that. Beauty. All right. It's always fun to sight fish them. See you, bud. Holy smokes. Big smallie just moved in. Dang it. Dang it. There he goes. Dang it. Shoot. Oh, whoa. What am I saying shoot for? Holy smokes. That is a short and a fat bluegill. What the heck? Have you ever seen a bluegill that looks quite like this? It's a circle. Okay, I have to get a picture of this if I can hold on to him for a second here. I don't have my phone handy, it's in my backpack, but look at this, I gotta screen capture that. This is hilarious. <laughs> that is the funniest looking bluegill I've seen in my life. Why is he like that? He's an actual circle. That is so funny. Unfortunately, that big smallmouth I saw cruise up here turned around and went back downstream. I'm gonna come up and fish this tree because it's gonna be game on up here. And then I think we're gonna turn around and start wandering back. All in all, this has been a fun morning session of fishing. Honestly, it's not even been that long. It's pretty funny how, uh, how productive it's been quantity wise. Oh, what do we got here? What do we got here? That's a nice Rocco skating them in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, he choked that. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to get out them pliers, I think. Man, kind of chunky. He looked bigger than he actually is. Not all that big. These fish like this tree, though. There's a, it's fighting hard. I think it's a rock bass turned sideways on me. That's what it is. No, it's actually a nice bluegill. Solid bluegill. It's always fun catching river uh, sunfish. I think it's an interesting deal. I feel like I usually fish for sunfish and bluegill in lakes, so it's always fun to catch them in rivers too. See hey, bud. God bless. What do we got here? This is a really nice bluegill. Oh my gosh, this is a really nice bluegill. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. It's not the 10 incher I'm in search of, but by golly, it ain't that far off, I bet. That's a long fish. Pursuit of a 10, which is like my series going on right now. I don't catch this fish, but this is probably pretty close to 10 inches. I don't think it is 10 inches, but I would be willing to bet that's probably a, uh, well, he's gone now, but that's probably like a um, eight and a half, nine inch bluegill, solid fish, and I'll take it. It's always nice to catch those fish in the river. There's another one. Oh my gosh, it's the same size. Same size, I think. Maybe just, yeah, no, same size. Holy smokes. Holy smokes, guys. This is not what I was expecting at all from this river trip. This one is probably close to 10 inches. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I have my measuring tape. I think I do. Oh no, I left it in my car. It's in my car. Shoot. All right, let's get a quick like basic measurement on this fish. I'm gonna go from the uh, top of my rod here, right at the, where it meets the, right at the real seat there. Okay, his chin is up against that. And his tail comes to his tail comes to this line right here, just about. Um, so we'll get a measurement on that later. Man, that is a beautiful fish. I love it. Two really, really nice bluegill right in a row. So he goes from this spot right here to this spot right here. I'm telling you, that very well could be a 10-inch bluegill. Cannot believe that. It's hilarious. You know, I was planning on mostly just catching holy smokes i found these really nice bluegill guys oh my gosh it's another just beauty holy smokes i was planning on some smallmouth some rock bass a little bit of this a little bit of that but i just caught three in a row male bluegill all big that's another fish in that same caliber this one's slightly smaller than the last one but holy cow buddy thank you holy cow i'm so glad I fished up against this tree. As much fun as I'm having, I do need to turn around and get back downstream, get back to my car. There we go. What's this? Probably another rock. No, another gill. Another gill. This one's not near as big as the last couple, but it's still a high quality fish. You saw he put up a nice fight as well. I'm telling you, this rod, I'm, I'm really a big fan. Oh, God, I'm just kind of like in awe right now. I don't even know what to say. Cause I just, I'm completely dumbfounded with the size of the gills here. Oh, snap. There's my largemouth. Look at this. There's a big smallmouth behind him. Holy smokes. Oh my gosh, he's got me in the tree. He's got me in the tree. Oh, guys, guys, this is where it goes to show this is a true ultralight. This is not a giant largemouth. There was a big smallmouth behind him, though. And this guy got me in the tree. Okay. 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 Okay, stop, he just ran into my leg. Okay, this is actually a pretty nice largemouth, especially for ultralight. Oh my gosh, guys, there you go. 
<laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, I wish we would have got up this I wish we would have got up this far on this river earlier cuz uh, this is where some of the big girthy ones live. Holy smokes. This on an ultralight. Holy smokes. That's a 16 incher. Holy crap. I really got this guy good. He had me in the tree. I was nervous he was going to break me off. I just had to kind of yank him out of there even though I'm using a 4 pound test. You just have to kind of get a little sketchy with it. That worked. That worked. Wow. All right. Donkey Tail Jr. Probably a 16 inch largemouth bass, ultralight rod. Great times. Great times on the river. I'm telling you, the smallmouth behind him, uh, the smallmouth behind him was like a legit 18 incher, I think. All right, I tell you what, today was an absolute blast. I caught a lot of fish and I caught a lot of different species. And I actually just measured my uh, rod butt here to kind of see how long that bluegill was. And it was just shy of nine inches. I got a little excited. I thought I had a 10 inch bluegill, but just shy of nine inches. But that's really solid. I mean, I caught probably three or four fish like that and they were all anywhere from seven and a half to nine inches, which is, pretty freaking awesome. Regardless, hopefully this video helps you understand what kind of rod this is. Like I said, it's $150. It's definitely an upper end ultralight. Certainly it's my nicest ultralight that I own. And I really think it's cool. I think it's a great rod. Um, I don't think you need to spend this much money. I don't think you need this fancy of a rod, but if it's something that you like and want to have, there's nothing wrong with it either. I don't know. I'm rambling. The point is that I think that this rod right here is a really nice setup. It's very different. It's very unique. It's certainly a stouter rod. And I would say it's not like your typical ultralight, but once you start hooking into some of those six to eight inch bluegill, those 10 to 12 inch bass, all that stuff, this thing performs really like a normal ultralight would. Uh, the smaller size fish, they don't really fight too hard on this because it is just a little bit stouter, but it's a solid stick. Anyways, I'm rambling. What I want to do is go home, get cleaned up. I am filthy and I want to make a sandwich. I want a nice, delicious turkey and cheese sandwich. It sounds great. Maybe a little bit of Miracle Whip on there. Yeah, I'm a Miracle Whip guy. Regardless, have a good day. We'll catch you next time.